Tuesday, Ken's Key Clue. What did I see in this Girl Scout murders that uh, made me go one way or another? Well, there's a lot of evidence, okay? There's a lot more in this than most cases. The flashlight, number one, being left at the scene. That's a great clue. However, what's inside of it is a newspaper. You know, not a whole newspaper, obviously, but a portion of newspaper that was, you know, I don't know if you guys, I think most of my uh, audience is about my age or a little older, according to the analytics that I see, you'll know what I'm talking about. The larger flashlights with the big batteries in them that sometimes you'd have to put a piece of cardboard in something for the battery to make contact. That was the case here, and there was a portion of a newspaper that was in the flashlight to make contact to make the flashlight work. Part of that newspaper is found in a cave, not too far from the scene. That's important. Now what I don't know, and I'm going to have to research further, and I'll know the answer of this tomorrow, is... Is that section from that cave, that newspaper, is that what's missing and is found in there or is it just the same edition? Because that, well, that would be different. You know what I mean? If it's just, hey, the front page of the newspaper is in the cave and the local section of the newspaper is ripped up and in the flashlight. Well, I'd want that local section from the cave to be missing to make that link. Does that make sense? So that's what I want to look at as well. There was a fingerprint on that flashlight that has not been identified. I'm going to look into that a little bit further, but I think, um, I think we're going to, we're going to have to come up with an answer for that. One of the things that stood out to me and was going to be one of my key clues was the sperm that was found inside two of the victims allegedly not allegedly I think it's fact I don't want to say allegedly if it's fact Gene Leroy Hart had a vasectomy so if that's the case how is sperm found in these two victims if that's the case it's not him right well I'm gonna to have to research the the likelihood of that that's not my key clue though my key clue is eyeglasses now what about eyeglasses at the scene there were numerous eyeglasses that were found discarded out in the into the woods in the surrounding areas that were taken from the tents why is that a signature you know from a serial killer does he break into the houses and remove sun sunglasses or prescription glasses and throws them out could be a signature right yeah but i don't want to go go there but when i saw gene leroy hart being arrested first thing i noticed on him was girl glasses. They certainly looked 
like girl glasses. They were glasses. But remember, when you see something or read something that strikes you a little bit, you have to research it further. I saw those glasses and it did not look right to me. They looked like they were girl glasses. Now, when I start looking back into his past behavior, he was arrested and convicted for kidnapping and raping two pregnant girls. Now, two pregnant girls is a very far cry from three young preteen girls, right? So right there, you're kind of like, well, I don't know. It's not the same MO. Think about Richard Ramirez. Think about Ted Bundy. Sure, Ted Bundy, long, straight, attractive, thin, brown-haired brunette girls. That was his type, right? But look at his final victim. Kimberly Leach, 12-year-old girl, okay? The Night Stalker, he raped kids. He killed the elderly, man and female, raped the, both of them all over the board. So you can't rule out an individual just because he had killed kids once, and then pregnant older girls later. You can't rule them out just based off of that. But what can you learn from his previous arrest and conviction? Well, I'll tell you what I learned is he left survivors. Those two girls survived, at least one of them for sure. I saw, because I saw an interview that she gave. Pretty sure the other one did too, but I did not, I, I didn't fact check that yet. So I won't say for sure, but the one that did survive recounted how he raped her, was making weird kind of noises, like almost animalistic noises. And coincidentally, it's the same noises that the camp counselor heard the night these three girls were killed. But it's what he does next that is my key clue. He takes, say it, I know you guys know it. Yes. He takes her eyeglasses. Now, why does he do this? Is it a souvenir? Is it a trophy from his victims? No. It's simply because he's got bad eyesight and he's trying to find a prescription that matches so he can see. Takes you right back to the Girl Scout murders. Right? Imagine you're on scene there and you're looking for clues. Who could do this? And you start seeing these eyeglasses out in the woods. Say there's just let's say there's three of them or four of them. What would you start thinking? And then you find a suspect, and when you arrest him, he has on girls' glasses. And then you start looking at his previous crime where he kidnapped and raped two girls, put duct tape, coincidentally, one of the girls. And this was duct taped. He duct tapes these two pregnant girls after he rapes them. Puts duct tape over their mouth and nostrils. Places them in the woods. Covers them with debris. And leaves them to die. But they don't die. And he takes their glasses. Would you link the two together? I'm betting you would. I know I would. I would start thinking to myself, all right, we got somebody here.
okay? That's how you build a case. That's not planning evidence. That's not fitting a, a somebody to match your theory. That's called good police work. Stuff's adding up. Okay, now we're on to something. Now you'll never convict based off of that, and you shouldn't be able to convict anybody based off that alone. But we're building a case, right? It's not one simple thing that convicts somebody. It's the totality. And I shouldn't say convict somebody because that's a wrong word. To solve the case, right? Because you can solve cases and people not be convicted. Happened in OJ. I don't care what anyone says. My opinion is OJ did it. He did it alone. It's the totality of all. So, in this case, right now, I have to think, why? If Gene Leroy Hart is responsible, why did it escalate from raping two girls, pregnant girls, and leaving them in the woods to die, to raping two kids and killing three of them? Why? Why that leap? Well, you could surmise he was convicted based off of these two people that he left to die, and they didn't. They identified him, right? Is that how he was caught? It's a good guess. So maybe with three Girl Scouts, he's not going to take that chance. Just like I felt in the yogurt shop murders. He killed them to leave no witnesses. Because he had been caught before by an eyewitness. And probably did state time or at least juvenile time for that crime. And he was robbing again. And he sexually assaulted and was not going to leave a witness. Could that have happened here? It certainly could have. So, Girl Scout murders. Tomorrow, man, we're going to really deep dive into this. And look at both sides of the coin. Was there enough evidence there to point the finger at Gene Leroy Hart? Was it a frame job? I believe... Most of the Native American community believes that. But is that the truth? That's what we have to determine here. We're going to look at all the evidence. We're going to look at that past sexual assault of the two pregnant girls. That the jury never got to hear about. Would that have changed their mind when he was arrested and acquitted for the Girl Scout murders? That's right. He was acquitted. Was that the right decision? We'll get into it. So that's it for Ken's key clue. Eyeglasses. Did you get it? I hope so. If not, we're going to get into more of those eyeglasses and how I felt that they tied everything together in these murders tomorrow on the deep dive. So, until tomorrow, Maine's out. Yeah.